Welcome to Behind Everyone Podcast. My name is Wilson Lee, your host today. Behind everyone, there is a story. A story of how they're faced with their biggest fears, rejections, and challenges. A story of where they rose up to occasion and transformed their lives. The turning point of where it all began. Be inspired by the raw stories from top performers and entrepreneurs across industries so you can start unlocking your potentials and start living your dreams. Now let's dive right in. Yeah. Do I look? Do I look cool? <laughs> right. Do I look cool? You look great. You know, yeah. that, you know what? We're gonna start that. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much, Matt, for for doing this interview with me. It's freaking awesome. I I actually forgot where I met you, but it's been a while. Yeah. It's, been, it's we, so funny. We, You're so smiling. <laughs> we uh, we've had at a, at a mastermind. That's where. Pretty much. At. Yes. Yeah. Oh, speaking of mastermind, you are the founder of the biggest internet mastermind in not in Vancouver, but in the world. Uh, we, are, we are the largest internet marketing meetup on meetup.com. Okay. Um, and, and, and it's called Internet Masterminds, but I don't think that Internet Masterminds is a traditional mastermind like we were at, where yeah. it was a small group of people sitting around a boardroom uh, sharing ideas and, and solving problems. Yeah. Internet Masterminds traditionally has been a place to educate the public about the best practices of internet marketing mm-hmm. by inviting a local speaker to come and share their case study of something that they did locally internationally in some capacity a marketing campaign yeah. they basically share what they did to achieve that success yeah. and we typically get dozens hundreds of people coming out to hear those stories yeah. um, so it's a little bit different than like a typical mastermind that we were part mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. that's awesome um, and how many people are in this meetup group of yours uh, so right now our meetup is at over 7,000 members yeah. and uh, uh, our goal over the next two years is actually to get to 100,000 members um, and wow. uh, through growing uh, globally and getting to 100 groups mm-hmm. around the world. My goal is to be within at least 10 countries, 100 groups and 100,000 members in two years. Wow. I originally just made up that goal, and then I actually researched to find yeah. out if it was feasible. And uh, I found a lot of other organizations that actually exceeded that goal yeah. without even trying within a two-year period. And so I'm really excited now uh, that we actually have a plan in place. We're yeah. actually building technology, so actually we have our, have our own platform that we can actually do this to scale. So yeah. uh, really excited about it. It's what we've been working on for the last little while, yeah. and um, getting ready to go global go global wow is that another hashtag brand of yours go global go global, global right go global. Go, go global I know at the same time you also have your social media director yeah. uh, license I actually have a few friends actually took it I think the, the impact that you're able to make in other people's lives has been tremendous because you know the, these kids that come to university they have nothing to do or even these moms they just take your course and then now they're killing it through Facebook yeah, yeah. I mean, traditionally our course is, you know, Facebook ads and sales funnels. Um, yes, we've had people that come out of school, college, right? Um, you know, college, you're learning um, textbook material. It's good. Um, a lot of people come out not understanding, you know, the world of business. One thing from learning from someone who's um, actually done it is that uh, you're learning, like, real-world business practices and, yeah. and strategies versus, again, just somebody who's, you know, I only teach stuff I actually do. I don't yeah. teach stuff that I just I read in a book, right? Yeah. And so not to, you know... Toot your own horn? No, no, no. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk bad about colleges and universities because I think that oh. they, they help a lot of people. But I have noticed that people who study, you know, marketing specifically mm. and get out of marketing... I don't know a whole lot. And, yeah. and again, some, some people are, are you know good and they, they, you know, they're reading books and they're you're looking at blogs, watching YouTube videos like while in school. Yeah. While there's others who just rely on the information they're getting in college or university and they come out and like, um, you know, they, they still need more uh, real world experience. And so that's why I think whether it's our course or someone else's course, learning from someone who's actually in the industry, yeah. I think is just the best way to learn. I think the whole info marketing world, I think that's why it's grown so much over the last decade. And I think it's going to sure. continue to grow. is because you're learning for people who are actually in it, right? And I think that's the reason why you're so influential in this space. Like, any internet marketers that I talk to, they all know who this Matt guy is. And I'm like, wow, like, your stuff is actually really, really good. Now, before it actually got to be such the scale it is now, that you're able to touch thousands of lives, like... Like, how did 
it all began for you and like was it as easy as like you know what I came out and this is what I started I started the internet master uh, masterminds and it did super well or were there any stories where you like oh fuck this sucks so you know originally I think the way it started was I started my company which is web friendly and I started the internet masterminds meetup group around the same month within like a one to two month period both so I started my company and then you know internet masterminds kind of happened very organically we can talk about that I was originally um, my, my goal was to be able to be a public speaker uh, started going to like Toastmasters nice, and things yeah, like yeah. that and I remember someone I actually think it was Roger Killen who was a yes. really friend of mine who said if you want to get good at speaking you just gotta go out and just speak more yeah you know yeah. and so that sounds like him actually yeah you know and then I, and I heard someone else say like do something every day that scares you or something yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like well public speaking scares me so any opportunity I would get to be able to speak in front of a group I, I would do it so I was part of this internet master Masterminds group, which was originally started from a Craigslist ad. But it wasn't my Craigslist ad, it was somebody else's ad. And basically they said, hey, Mondays, 7 o'clock, inside this dingy old hair salon, yeah. you guys can come in and we're, we're going to talk about internet marketing. Originally we were watching uh, videos of Frank Kern and other internet marketers, and we'd watch a video and like, discuss it. Right? Yeah. So these other guys were like organizing this event, and then um, you know, one day I show up, and you know, there's, you know, before we had like 50, 60 people coming out, and this one day I show up, and there's like 20 people there, right? And the main guys who were organizing it didn't show up, and they decided it wasn't for them anymore. And we didn't have an, uh, an email list or a meetup or any way for them to communicate that. Yeah. So the guy whose hair salon it was had the doors still open, and the projector was set up, and you know, whatever, but the guys didn't show up, right? So then everyone's just sitting there like, well, what do we do now? Yeah. And then I was sitting in the back, and I, you know, <laughs> shyly put my hand up, and I said, I saw a video online we could watch, yeah. <laughs> and I played them a video of Gary Vaynerchuk. Nice. Okay? Okay. And at that time, this is ten years ago. This is two thousand and nine. Yeah, nine nine years. Yeah, ago. this is almost ten years ago. And at the time, you know, Gary V was, you know, I think he had thirty thousand followers on Twitter, yeah. and uh, you know, he, he wasn't as popular as he is today. Um, and so yeah, I showed them this video, and everyone's like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And, and he was talking about how social media was going to be like the next big thing. So they're like, "Oh, social media sounds amazing! Can you teach us more? Like, what's Twitter? Right? Yeah. Like, they really were like, what's Twitter? Right? And this is like, you know, we're talking Twitter before Justin Bieber was there, before Oprah was there, or Ashton Kutcher. Like, once oh, those wow. celebrities started getting on, that's yeah. when Twitter really blew up. Right? Yeah. This is prior to that era, right? So they said, can you teach us about Twitter? So then the next Monday came along and I was getting to my very first like public speaking presentation. And I was so worried, I actually, there was another friend that was in the group and uh, I asked him if he would present with me because he had some public speaking experience. I said, just in case I screw up so bad that like you just pick it up in case I, you know, I don't know what to yeah, say. Yeah. I ended up being able to fulfill and like I did most of the presentation and taught everybody about like how Twitter works, like yeah. really the basics. And they're like, that's great, can you learn more, right? So, you know, fast forward six months later, every Monday night we're doing each other masterminds and yeah. I was just teaching what I knew. Yeah. And then I thought started thinking, well like I'm not I'm not getting a lot of value out of this. Like all I'm doing is teaching everything that I know, but like I wanna learn stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize at the time that I was actually quite naive. I didn't realize that when you teach, you learn. Mm. You know, uh, you process things. You know, the information in your mind. You basically it's kind of like blogging or writing, right? Mm. Like you actually can like figure out what you actually know. But at the time, I didn't know that, so I was like, I want to find other speakers to come in here. So then I started finding other speakers. So every Monday night, we'd have a new speaker, and uh, and then that grew and grew and grew, and then that's what really became what Internet Masterminds is today. So you're teaching a course in the back of a salon for the longest time yeah just doing these little workshops like one hour talk yeah. yeah and then eventually I said hey I'm gonna do a weekend workshop yeah the first time I did it I charged uh, three hundred and seventy five dollars oh yeah yeah I don't know I just came up with that number somewhere and then uh, I, I filled it up uh, we did it inside of a small boardroom in the back of a coffee shop okay yeah. and then uh, I remember that we had our projectors set up in the small room and the projectors the heater the projector would get so warm so by the end of the day this room is so hot yeah we're all sweating if you look at the very first picture of our first workshop you see everyone had like armpit sweat and stuff <laughs> it's really bad then you know slowly I you know I raised the prices you know more and more then I realized that I was able to fulfill my the lifestyle I had at the time which yeah. is not 
an elaborate lifestyle by any means, but I was able to pay my own bills and yeah. that sort of thing by just you know working one weekend per yeah. month. And I, you know, I, in a, in a sense, like I achieved the four-hour work week, nice, nice, plus a weekend. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you know, I continued going. Eventually, moved all the courses online, and that's what really scaled the business for to sure. where it's at today. Now you're charging like thousands for your course. Yeah, right now our course is uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred dollars uh, USD. Join. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, but it's it's much more than what it was. Oh, no, for you know, sure, yeah. It's like yeah. Before, like, it was, like, literally, like, how to set up a social media pro, like, how to set up a Twitter Profile. account, how to set up a uh, Facebook. Like, I was logging people in, creating accounts on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, now it's, like, we're actually teaching, like, how to, like, actually get leads and sales yeah. and how to build a sales. Yeah. No, of course, I'm not devaluing you, of course. I'm yeah, just saying, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. from 375 to 2500 USD, yeah. that growth and that value that you bring and the scalability, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's awesome. Cool. That, now, from during that phase like how you grew were there any times where you like screwed over because we, we kind of talked a little bit about that you're like you know what let me talk about it later on sure <laughs> so you know I try to put the uh, you know the you know, the past behind me and oh, yeah. times like of that but I will share the story only because I think that it is an important lesson to anyone who's maybe facing this right now or someone who's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur and afraid of yeah. getting screwed over. I will say that if you believe that you are on the right, I think it's all going to work out for you in the end. If you go out and you have the scarcity mindset of trying to screw people over or trying to you know, get some early returns or whatever, I think it always doesn't work out for the best. Um, so what happened when we started Internet Masterminds, it was started between me and uh, the other gentleman who owned the property in which we were hosting the events. There's one? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what happened was we had to uh, buy a projector and a screen, we had to buy chairs, stuff like that, and it was all coming out of our own pockets. So we said, well, we should start charging something for these events. They were originally just free. So we started charging like five bucks at the door just to cover our costs, right? Yeah. And we were charging five bucks at the door for, I think... I want to say like three years, two or three years. And he was like our treasurer. And any time we had to, we needed a projector, we needed a, chairs would break or you know, whatever it would happen, right? Uh, one time we did like a barbecue for everybody. And we, yeah. you know, we bought all the burgers for everyone. It was just like a, you know, whatever, just like a community event. We took it out of our, our funds. So then uh, I started getting this idea. I said, hey, it would be great if we could film all of our talks. Yeah. And people would always say, hey, I can't make it to the event, but I'd love to see it and I'll pay for the video. So I said, it would be great if we could film the events, um, put those videos into a membership site and then sell a membership that would include yeah. access to all the videos as well as access to all the events. And yeah. like, let's build the technology to do that. And so I said, let's, let's count our cash because we have them all you know, it, it, I thought we had them all into separate envelopes for every night. This is how much we made, who showed up, and like, like they were always a sealed envelope that was going into a safe. Yeah. And um, I started asking, you know, the other, you know, uh, you know, co-organizer at the time, and saying, hey, like, let's meet up and let's, let's count the cash. Let's figure, yeah. let's figure out what our budget is, right? Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that there was this avoidance and avoidance and avoidance, and it, and it went on for quite a while. So one day I showed up before an event and I said. What's going on? And uh, and he said basically that uh, he wanted to be able to have a, a share of those funds to basically pay for rent for using the space. And um, and so uh, you know I said that's you know fine. I mean it's fair enough. But uh, the challenge was that he wanted to be retroactively paid for for that three years. Yeah, and then apparently the the calculation that he made apparently equaled all the money. <laughs> and just so happens, right? So, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to... I hate the ballpark it because I don't know how much money was actually no. there. Yeah, I yeah. just... You know, the number that he gave was in range of the number that I thought we might have or whatever. So we actually got a, a mediator involved. There was other people who we call wow. like our founding members uh, that were there as well. Uh, mostly everyone was kind of in a sense, I want to say, kind of siding with me or, you know, tr trying to, we were trying to find a resolution. And uh, we were not able to find a resolution. And uh, basically, I said, you're, "I see you containing your your anger inside. You're like, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's just like all these like words. I'm not angry. I'm actually really disappointed because this this person was actually a friend of mine at the time. Yeah. Uh, he, he might see this, you know. And uh, I don't. Uh, I don't, no, I don't look to start start starting. Sorry, shit, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, it, it is what it is, right? But the, the, the point being that, you know, at the end, you know, I just, you know, move forward on my own. I said, I'm going to let this go behind me, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, we just moved to a new location. The new location was only a few blocks away. We, we now needed to raise money because I, I wanted to fulfill my dream of being able to record and, and uh, put me to the site. So we started charging 10 bucks at the door, or sorry, 10 bucks uh, to get in. So originally it was $10 online, and we made it $10 online, 20 at the door to yeah. try to, you know, get people to register early or whatever. Um, and then within that first year, I believe that we raised more money than what we had in the previous three years, mm. right? And, and then I built the site and yeah. I, now we have a membership site nice. and uh, now we're doing this and, and now I, I'm going to go globally. So, you know, it was... It was a hard business lesson at the time. I remember I, I was really angry. Yeah. I wrote this long letter that I was going to send to the whole meetup, being like, "This is what's going on," and did it, you know, whatever. And I sent it to a few what I call the founding members that were kind of there at the beginning. And I said, "Guys, this is what I'm planning to send out. You know, I am feeling angry. What do you think?" <laughs> <laughs> and so, they, uh, uh, I remember one person read it and said, Matt, just don't send it. Don't, don't say anything. Nobody knows yeah. who's organizing what. Like, you you know, you have all this information, but most people who come don't realize yeah. any of this stuff, what's going on, right? So, like, just don't say anything. Mm. And I said, okay. So, I just never said a thing. And, uh, yeah, that, that was it. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it was hard at the time, but uh, now... The group has, you know, continued to grow, yeah. and uh, you know, I've always, I want to create a kind of an environment that I want to be a part of. So yeah. when I do an event, I organize the event that I would go to. I find mm. a speaker. When we talk about the topic, we talk about the topic that I'd want to learn about. No, for when sure. I get out of my office or out of my bed or out of my house or whatever to go to this event. Yeah. If the answer is no, I'm not going to do it, even though I'm the organizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a long time, we were doing events where um, we were just, you know, anyone who wanted to speak, I'm like, okay, yeah. what topic do you want to speak about? They would do it, and I'd sit in the back, I'd play on my phone, I'd be bored during the whole <laughs> event, um, so that I almost shut the group down because I wasn't really feeling like I was enjoying it. Right? Yeah. But people were coming, they, they were learning, right? So as soon as I switch it to be like the kind of environment, the kind of event, community that I want to be a part of, yeah. You know the, the value of having your own you know, in-person community like mm -hmm. that is like I think that's like my whole business was mm -hmm. basically based off of that. I think there's so much value. I've actually realized that I think that I've created more value, you know, in the yeah. world or the community through Internet Masterminds, yeah. even though it's not me teaching people at Internet Masterminds. Yeah. It's people bring, bring, bringing people together. No, for sure. I've realized that I'm so much more of like a connector. People always come to me and say, hey, can you connect me with this person? Do you know somebody mm -hmm. here, right? So it's like we've done a lot with Social Media Director and, and I love that and, and I, you know, I could take a little bit more credit because I'm showing people specific strategies that yeah. I spent oftentimes hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars to try to figure out, well, you know, what's going to work and then I just give it away, yeah. you know? Uh, whereas in Internet Masterminds, I'm bringing people together, giving them insights, giving them inspiration and uh, and I've seen that create a huge impact in our community as well. So I, I guess like the biggest lesson that for our viewers is that, you know, set the the foundation right right from the get-go, right? Have everything out in the clear, right? Like where does the money go instead of being like, hey, you know what, we're buddy buddies, you know what, we'll deal with it later kind of thing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, sort of, yeah. Sort of? I mean, Do you want to elaborate? Or you, it doesn't have you're, to be you're that. You're talking about like how, how, the, how the money was collected? No, it's more so like, hey, you know what, for, for entrepreneurs or leaders, <laughs> or whatever it is that, you know what, what can we learn from your stories from just that? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, if you're going to do a community event like that, I think it is a good idea to charge something. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Like, at the time, I don't think we made a mistake by saying, let's just charge five bucks and we'll figure it out later what we yeah. have to do, right? Because we're, we're not trying to make money. I still don't make money from the Internet Masterminds Meetup, right? Like, our profit per event is in a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the amount of time invested and so on, I mean... It, it, it's not. It's, you're not going to do it to make money. Yeah. Right? Um, you do it to build a community, to build the connections, build yeah. your influence. There's other ways that you can profit from doing something like that. Mm -hmm. So the intention is always to not make money. I yeah. actually always look at how do we spend this money to market our events to bring more people in. Yeah. We have expanded our marketing budget per event just to bring more people in. Right. Mm -hmm. We've done deals where we actually fly a speaker in and we pay for their wow. expenses and yeah. then we lose money on an event, but we made money in the last three, so it works, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so the intention was never to try to make money from the event. So it's more so that, like, 
I think kind of go into that end lesson where I just kind of like I wrote the angry letter and then I just didn't send it and talk about it and just that was it right I didn't go out and try to retaliate this guy's name retaliate whatever right like just do you yeah, you just just move on, right? Yeah. I mean, there was another time too where like we did some consulting work. Not consulting, we actually built an entire, we rebuilt an entire business, and uh, it was a, it was a large project for us at the time. We got a small deposit that hardly paid for the expenses of rebuilding. We built sales funnels, new copy, new website, new logo. We actually rebranded the name, bought the wow. domain. Like we helped this this organization like rebrand everything. And then at the end, um, we were we were delayed like by like about three weeks or so because yeah. we had some video guys that were doing some work for us that you know they were they were doing it for a little a, a small cost compared to what we were getting. And you know they were late. It was during Christmas time and we got some delays. Like, we were like I want to say like a month late and they were yeah. just like well, you're a month late we're not paying you and the whole thing was like dude like we made no money like this is an agreement that we had and like yeah. we spent the, your your initial deposit was to get all this stuff done this, yeah. is, this is all like in writing this is, this yeah, is yeah, our yeah. deal right I was really pissed right because I was like we were, we were expecting one is that we were supposed to get a percentage on the sales oh, sure. and we were supposed to get this other part which is our actual profit for doing all that work mm-hmm. so the way that we structured the deal we were being very generous and fair to like <laughs> hey, we want to work with these guys let's, let's, let's make it happen and um, you know they didn't pay us and then uh, you know my initial thought was well got the agreement right here let's go to court yeah. right? now, this is a small claims court this is pretty open and close case yeah. like you know, we, we are deserving of these funds, and I was doing that with another partner at the time, and uh, we both agreed that it, it just wasn't worth our energy, you yeah. know, all the negative energy of going in and you know, fighting them about it and mm-hmm. going to court, and like, you know, it was like uh, going to court alone would probably take us, you know, one day, maybe two days, you know, yeah. it's like if we just spent a day or two prospecting for a new client, we'll yeah. get a new client which, that's going to be worth way more, you know? Yeah. So it was just kind of like, it's like, okay, we got screwed over. Yeah. Let's just let's move on, let's, let's move on, let, let it go. Yeah, that sort of thing, right? I actually um, have a similar story like that. We remember in Vancouver Winter Wonderland. Yeah. I got two guys that wrote me a check that bounced. Yeah. And just went on and on and on, uh, back and forth, back and forth. It was like, I think it was like four grand mm-hmm. that I was trying to fight, like actually ask these guys for it. And they're like, you know what, don't worry, I'll send you guys a new check, da da da, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Send me two checks. Both checks bounced. Fuck. And then they timed it so perfectly that by the end of the event, like that was when I was cashing on my check. That was when I would get the notice that oh my bound, my my check was bounced. Mm-hmm. So once again, I was in the same shoe as you. I was like, hey, should I go to same uh, the small courts or and deal with it, or should I just you know move on from that whole thing? Because it's already water under the bridge. There's really honestly, it's probably not their first time doing something like that. They are pretty kind of I would say educated in their field to keep pulling this stuff off, right? So yes. I'm like, you know what? Let's just bite the bullet and just move on and yeah. I think just not letting that negativity consume who you are and just being positive and just you know what let's let's move on let's move on let's, let's continue I, you know I learned on. this uh, concept a long time ago it's like whenever there's uh, friction in your life yeah. whatever that might be uh, you have to either deal with it or let it go. And I remember when I first learned this concept and I I did the 80-20 principle on it. Yeah. So I wrote down all the areas of my life where I had friction yeah. and then I ranked them. Yeah. And then I said, well, if I just dealt with you know, I maybe made a list of ten, but mm-hmm. if I just li- you know dealt with the first two, yeah, it would lift so much, you know, stress off my shoulders or whatever it was. And I remember at that night, I remember my things were um, your girlfriend. <laughs> this is a long time ago. But actually, <laughs> yeah. it was it was was a girl. There was uh, yeah an ex girlfriend where like we broke up and decided that we just wouldn't talk for a while just yeah. so we would have some space, okay. right? And I felt like I needed to get like closure or something, so I like I think I called a message or text or something yeah. and said hey how's it going whatever and then they're yeah, good and then yeah. you know they let go um, one of my good friends I was uh, making some like yo mama jokes to him <laughs> one night and uh, I thought it was really funny yeah. but he didn't yeah. and uh, we were talking for like a month or something and I just said like hey man I'm sorry for making fun of your mom or whatever <laughs> you were what, you know and, uh, and the other person was like, I was in an argument with my dad about something. I can't remember what it was that was yeah. well. And then I called him. I said, hey, let's meet for a coffee. We hadn't talked for, I don't know how long it was, a week or something like that, two weeks. We met for a coffee. And I just remember, like, feeling this release of stress mm. immediately happening. And uh, and then, yeah, I just always now, whenever there's some friction in my life, it's like, how do I deal with it or let it go? Because if you don't, 
it's going to stop you from maximizing your output into the world and your productivity and your creativity and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I've been really big on that. Anytime there's something like that, it's yeah. like try to avoid it in the first place. Yeah. But if it is created, which is bound to happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to deal with it. So I guess that theory or that concept and um, has been part of your success. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah 100%. That's awesome. Do you have any secrets, or not even secrets, like epiphanies or uh, theories or principles that you think has been like just super life-changing for you? Aside from, you know, deal with it or let it go, like for people who want to excel in business or even within their industry or just excel as a self-development. Because I know you're really into this kind of thing. Like, that's the reason why I'm like, I want to find out if you have any, like... Yeah, okay, so, so there's something that's been coming out for me lately and I've been hearing more and more of it. And it's around this idea of, like, having a scarcity mindset, right? Like, being afraid that there's not enough for everybody, um, you know, holding your cards tight, you know, and, and I didn't know that I am, you know, I don't have a scarcity of mind. I think there was areas where maybe I maybe did in some areas of my life, but for the most part in business, I don't. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought it was great. And I started, I started noticing people around me who did. And there was, you know, one particular person that I was working with very closely that was, you know, always kind of assuming that I was going to do something wrong or, you know, rip him off or, you know, whatever. And I was insulted by it, you know, yeah. internally. I was like, why would you think that I would do that? Like, yeah. It's not even, it's beyond my character. It's not yeah. even logical, right? And I realized it was more in the mindset. So I heard somebody say this, this concept. I, I don't know where it came from, but it's basically like, if you look at yourself five years from now and you think... Um, you know, if I lived every single day um, meeting everybody and thinking, what can I get out of this person? Mm. What's your life and what's your business going to look like in five years? Versus if you go out every day and every person that you meet, you think about, how can I add value to this person? Yeah. And then what's your life, what's your business look like in five years? Mm -hmm. When I really sat down and I really thought about it, yeah. right? It's like, I don't want to see my life in five years where I'm just going seeing what can I get out of somebody, what can I get out of somebody, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it just like, I don't know, to me, it just like opened up my mind to the fact that, you know, the more value that you add, it's yeah. not, doesn't just, you know, help you make more friends or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a mindset that applies to your entire life, you know, um, so in all aspects of life, I think. Coming, uh, like working in abundance is what you're saying. Don't yeah. work in a mind frame of uh, scarcity. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, and again, I think just because I've been, over the last couple of months, kind of dealing with some people in my life that I felt were um, coming from that place, and mm -hmm. I wasn't able to pinpoint and identify, like, kind of what it was about our personalities that were kind of not matching, yeah, yeah, yeah. then when I started hearing about this concept, you know, I, you know, became... You know, uh, you know, uh, I guess you call it like a mental model that I was. I realized that people were into, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah. So now I'm able to identify people, you know, based on their character, what they say, and so on. And if I feel like they're in that scarcity mindset, if I know them close enough, I might address it with them. Like otherwise, yeah. Is otherwise, that why you called me the other day? <laughs> no. I think you have a very abundant mindset. I do. I, I actually yeah, do. You, you yeah. definitely do. Yeah, but you know, otherwise, it's just like don't don't deal with those kind of people, mm -hmm. right? And just kind of like let it go. It's, it's the same thing. Looking back at those two people that you know screwed, uh, me, screwed over. me over, and just thinking back to them and their personalities, mm -hmm. there was definitely scarcity mindsets in mm -hmm. both both places, right? And now that I I, I know how to identify it, yeah. if I meet someone, would be a client or you know potential. Um, you know, student or mm -hmm. business partner or whatever. Once I see that they have that sort of a mindset, I know to kind of back away from it. Gotcha, and, uh, gotcha. It's not not going to be the right fit. So wow, that is actually a very very profound um, principle, and I find that as a recurring theme when it comes to like super successful entrepreneurs or industry leaders is that they're so giving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether it be their time, knowledge, value, whatever the case may be. And the law of attraction just brings it back. It just bounces it back, right? The more you give, the more you receive. And it's it's such a mental thing that it's not something you can teach. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's like something you got to feel for. And yet it, it's such a profound thing that... 
I, but actually, I, I, do, I don't know if I really believe that there is, um, like, like karma. I, like, I kind of believe in karma, but I don't think that it is, like, karma or, like, the way of the no, world like, or whatever. For sure. Yeah, but yeah. it's the way that one will react, react to a situation. Psychologically. Yeah, that yes. makes a huge difference. You might think, well, if I'm giving more in the world, then I will get more back. It's mm-hmm. like the more value you create, the more you, you receive. It's, it's not karma, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's how you're actually reacting to, to things. Yeah. And you're, you're looking at opportunities in different ways. Yeah. And so it, it's, you know, it is your actions that, that's yeah. creating the value. You. It's not just like the way of the world kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I thought a lot about that as well. Oh, yeah. so you, you dove deep into that. I used to really be a big believer in karma. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But no, the, it's, it's yeah. like um, this this technique with with running a business where if you give something to someone, they're more prone to buy from you. Like that's the reason why people give samples because like, oh shit, I feel like I owe this person something. So you know what? I'm gonna buy a bubble tea or I gotta buy some yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. It's some it's along the same principle of human psychology that. It, the, more, the more you receive, the more you kind of have to like, oh, now I have to give back or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just thought of another point. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It'd be interesting to just, I'd be curious to chat with you about it too um, because it's probably going to be relevant to when this gets uploaded too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when you talk about like, you know, influencing people by giving away free things, I think about the book um, uh, Persuasion. Yes. by Robert Caldini, right? I think best marketing book. If anyone hasn't read the book, Persuasion by Caldini, um, you know, it's always, anybody who asked me, you know, was getting into marketing and said, what book should I read? It's always like, you have to read that book, right? I've read yeah. it twice. Uh, anyways, um, so I think it's interesting. So he, when he's, re- re- when you're reading the book and the way that it was written is like, he's very much saying like, he was writing it not so marketers could use it for evil to persuade people, but so consumers could understand what marketers are doing to persuade them. Okay. So it's written in that context. It's actually yeah. written for a consumer. Yeah. Right? But of course, marketers eat it up, right? Yeah. So you know, and he knew, and he read it, wrote it, that yeah. marketers are going to want it. However, there's just all this news happening right now around Facebook and the uh, whole, um, you know, the Cambridge and we're just talking thing. about it. Yeah, right? And it's interesting because, uh, you know, at the time of this recording, uh, you know, face, uh, Mark Zuckerberg was just at the, the Senate Congress. answering questions or at yeah, the Congress answering questions and stuff. And they were, you know, referring to this, you know, Cambridge thing about how they were using this information to influence um, people during the election. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure. I'm curious your thoughts. And this is more of just a discussion. And yeah. I would love to this be a discussion maybe in the comments of this video because yeah. I'm curious. I, when I heard that, I was like, isn't that what a good marketer does? If I were to go and, um, you know, do proper market research, yeah. I go into Google and I find out a lot about my audience so that way I could write a better ad, mm-hmm. create better content, and persuade them to buy. Yeah, yeah. Is that wrong? You know? And by the way, just so nobody freaks out, I understand why it was wrong that they got the data the way they got the data. Uh, I get that part, okay? So, (laughs) I'm going to get flamed and my video is going to get taken down because of your question. I I think that marketers and entrepreneurs Mm. kind of get it. I think it's the consumers who aren't really understanding, right? It's kind of like why Kevin wrote the book, is to educate the market, right? But they seem to be saying, like, oh, they use this data in order to influence people during the election. And I was like, but that's what that's you need point. to do. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're supposed to do, right? So yes, I get that the way that they claim the data and stuff, but there's other ways to find the information beyond that. Mm-hmm. Like Facebook alone, if you look at, um, this tool's probably gonna be gone by the time this goes up, but um, yeah, it's been around for a long time, but it's called uh, Audience Insights. If you look up Facebook. Is it, you think it's gonna be gone? Oh, I, I get that. So if you look up no way. Facebook Audience Insights, uh, if you go on there right now and you, yeah, yeah. Type in women in Canada that are between the ages of 21 to 30. Wow. Yeah. It will tell you what kind of shows they like, books they read, whatever you know, whatever you want, yeah. right? And uh, it'll tell you that kind of stuff, right? So it's like that data is already there. And Facebook's just one example. Like, there's a lot of ways you could find. There's a lot of market research. Um, oh, totally. You know, I know the Vancouver Public Library. I think it was like last year. I heard that they they bought a whole bunch of data that's actually available yeah. um, in the back end of the library if you want to do lots of market research for your business, right? Wow. And um, especially marketing research, right? Yeah. Anytime I'm going to do a campaign, I'm going to do a lot of marketing research about the audience, mm-hmm. right? So. But to backtrack on this as well, this is another interesting thing. Is a friend of mine took me to Landmark, 
Yes, and yes, yes. Peru in a landmark, and I was totally turned off by landmark. So wait a second, can you give us some more context for people that don't know what landmark is? It's basically a three-day uh, discovery, or it's actually a, they provide you with a tool to view what the world is like. Is is that good? Sure, it's a, it's a personal development workshop. Yeah. If you guys don't know, look up Landmark. A lot of people have probably been there, probably yeah. will resonate it's, it's, with this. They either love it or they either hate it. Yeah. So my thing with Landmark was I was there and the whole time I couldn't get over why was all the staff, by the way, all the staff are volunteers. Yeah. And I was like, why are they volunteering? That's, I couldn't, I was like trying to figure it out right? yeah. the whole time in my mind. I was like, because these are very successful business people, yeah. um, you know, CEOs of large yeah. companies, yeah. CFOs, the, the woman who led our workshop, I think she was like a CFO of like a multi billion dollar company. Milestones, CEO of Milestone. Was- yeah, whoever, right? Like they, they have like influential people yeah, that yeah. are smart, you know. They- Lululemon, they, they put all their staff through Landmark as well. Yeah, right. So I was like, but I was like, why are these people volunteering? So I was trying to, like, what did they do to persuade them yeah. to? influence them to do this right so that I was just, it was going in my mind right and then I, you know for me I was listening to the words that were being spoken very yeah. carefully I'm familiar with NLP, NLP yeah. hypnosis yeah. and so on and my perspective yeah. okay and let's not don't bash me in the comments here but my perspective was that they were using a lot of that yes 100% right? and uh, they were they were shifting the mindset of oh. people during the audience right and in order to you know, get them to enroll. Yeah. And they specifically use the words enroll, which yeah. is also, you know, something to be looked at, right? And just the, the psychology of the wording that they're using and so on. It's not wrong, right? Yeah. But they were persuading people in that sort of way, influencing people in that way. Then there was the people who were actually um, leading these workshops that yeah. were volunteers, right? And I, you know, why were they volunteering? Like, mm-hmm. well, I had such a big impact and this they would give this like irrational reason or rational, I don't know. Like yeah. they were giving this reason that was just like, but why? Like, what do you mean? Like, why don't you just do your own workshop? Or what? You know, like, oh, but this is a community. Yeah, and like, yeah. you know, then there's this whole thing about like having significance, the mm. community around you. A lot. Of, like, I know when I was at Tony Robbins, yeah. when people would go to the back of the room and he would sell something, he would yeah. then bring them on the stage. Yeah. So that way, they he would, she would show them significance and community on the stage. You know, yeah. I noticed that as a marketing thing. I didn't think it was wrong. I thought it was interesting. You know, but there was something about landmark that turned me off. And so later, I told my friend, I was like, I'm not sure. You know, whatever. By the next day I was like dude landmark is bad you gotta get out of there yeah, blah, 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 yeah. you know whatever and I was like really turned off by it and later we had dinner and I was with a group of friends and I was you know we were kind of doing this whole back and forth about is landmark right or wrong and I couldn't pinpoint what was wrong about it and then you know, we had a lot of discussion about it and by the end I I I felt that because they weren't being upfront with mm. people about what they were, what kind of tools they were using to shift their, their minds, which they were doing in it, they're, they're shifting their minds in a positive way to impact them in a positive way in the world, yes. in, in their life, right? Yeah. But they were still using these tools to influence them, right, in order to make them better people, right? I- yeah. So we were discussing whether it was right or wrong to be using these types of tools. When I say tools, I'm talking language patterns and you know physical movement with our bodies and so yeah. on, right? That's like you know familiar in psychology. The psychology, a lot, a lot of human psychology techniques and everything, right? Yeah. yeah. I so, tell my, I tell my, my the people that don't know, it's like when you go in, go with the mindset of you know what, seventy percent. No, sorry, I'll say like sixty percent sales mm-hmm. and thirty percent of real content. Mm-hmm. And that's how I see it. And if you can see past the sales techniques and everything, and not, them not letting you stand up, you know, putting you through a twelve-hour day yeah. of just sitting in a chair and listening to people cry and just that all the emotional shit that they put you through. Yeah. If you can just take the content for what it is, I find it very useful. Oh, yeah, and a lot of people do, yeah. right? But at the time, there was something that turned me off. Yeah, it is by the way that they were doing it, yeah. right? And I'm not, and I do believe that their mission and what they do is actually a good thing. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't think their landmark is a bad thing or anything. However, just going back to the discussion yeah. on what is fair use of techniques. Yeah, to Even influence psychology. people, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, Cambridge Analytica found out certain information about a certain yeah. demographic that they could change their messaging based yeah. off of that. You know, like, where do you draw the line on what's right and wrong, right? And I think it's really interesting because I had this whole, like, you know, I was like, 
in, in, in kind of an argument with a really good friend, right, about like this whole thing. And I was healthy really, debate. Uh, it was a healthy debate. Yeah, yes. it actually definitely turned into a healthy debate. I won't <laughs> start that way. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. But now looking at you know marketing in general, right? It's like now we have all this knowledge, and now it's like our society, you know, based on the news and media, is saying it's not right to research your market to influence them. It's like, what, I, where do you draw the line? I, I, I personally think that, you know, that's a very good example, either like Facebook marketing or um, whether it be landmark marketing, whatever the case may be, people are using these techniques and I think it's free for all. It's, it's up to, like what you're saying, it's up to you to get the knowledge. Well, what happens when the government has all these crazy technology that's not public access, yet they're using these on us? Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I think, think they already are. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then who are they to judge people who are using public access information on telling people that they're wrong? Yeah. Right? So, I mean, I'm not trying to draw a line here or whatever the case is, but hey, if you are so against it, then go ahead and do something about it. Like, as in, hey, I'm going to start something that is counteracting what you're doing with the same principle or techniques. Mm. Like, for me, I think that's a much better way of doing it because it's a free world. That's the beauty of what we're, we're yeah. living at right now. I think the other side, too, is that if consumers were to be more educated mm-hmm. about what marketers are doing... What's a, it's their choice, though. Like People don't want to be educated. They love lying in the freaking sofa and watching Kim Kardashian. Like Even my, my wife. Like I'll be like, hey, go to this self-development course with me. She's like, no, I want to watch my reality shows because I love being my, numb, my brain being numb. Like she yeah. loves it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing as marketers. I, I, like I they it. love to buy stuff, but then they don't like to be sold. So it's our job to make yeah. them want to buy and yeah. not sell shit to them, right? But, but to the point of like the government stepping in saying, you know, you unfairly inf- or this company unfairly influenced people, right? Yeah. And then they're looking at Zuckerberg saying, what's the solution, right? I think what a potential solution is is that the types of material in the book like influence. Yeah should be in the curriculum of like high school right wow, we're, so that way we're treading on like waters that I, I think so I think that like that way people understand you know what yeah. you know what they're you know how they're being marketed to and how they're being influenced and stuff so you can be more aware of it because when I went to Landmark because I was aware of what they were doing I was like no I, I don't want to I don't want to be a part of it for whatever reason I didn't like the the, uh, the, the field for yeah. whatever reason I didn't like it yeah. right but I got to make that decision if I didn't have that knowledge of what they were doing yeah. or whatever yeah. I, you know I never I would never even thinking about uh, I get what you uh, other things I would just be like yeah this is awesome and I you know I'm gonna go go to the thing right yeah. um, so you know what before we yeah. get sidetracked too much yeah this is a good healthy debate right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no but thank you so much for dropping so much knowledge and bomb and nuggets for us because you know that's exactly what we that's exactly the whole point of this show is to allow us to look behind of people who are successful, who has done it, and look from their lens to see how you can take from what we have in our brains and go and create your own success, your own aspiration, or whatever you want to achieve, right? Mm-hmm. So that, on that note, I really appreciate your time and thank you so much for you know coming on this interview and just dropping so much bombs for it with awesome. us. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Really hope that you guys enjoyed it and took away things that you can take action right away. If you guys enjoyed it, leave us a review. That's going to mean a lot for us. If you guys don't like it, also leave it below so I know how to improve for future episodes. Until next time, see you guys later.